Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, the 15th of April. Thanks for watching this quick update. Uh, this week's update for all of our all of our family here at Calvary Baptist. We're outside the building. Obviously, it's a glorious day. Uh, that's what we expect here in Santa Barbara, right? We hope that you're having a good week. We're praying that all of this will be over soon, and we're praying for one another in the middle of it. I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk to you about church revitalization and how being in the middle of a pandemic, how church revitalization plays out in that. I've had some of my pastor friends ask me about that over the last couple of weeks. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of refresh on where we are on God's uh, kindness and his providence, what he's done for us here at Calvary over the last year and what we are praying that he'll continue to do into the future. And so I'm going to visit with you about the five areas of church revitalization. You've heard me talk uh, about them before. The first one has to do with uh, biblical preaching and biblical theology and a high view of God. And I hope you can tell that we're continuing to strive to do that in our messages that we've been live streaming and in the material that we're trying to push out to you. Uh, we're trying to continue to have you go deeper in your view of who God is and what he's doing. And one of the things that uh, will help us with that is our new sermon series in the book of Psalms, where we will look at God and uh, his greatness and how the Psalms speak into that. And that will be helpful not only to quiet and calm and strengthen our own hearts and souls through this time, but also we hope that it will give you a resource to encourage others, people in your family, neighbors, people who are asking you about why does God allow these kinds of things to happen? Why is this world so broken? If God really loves us, then why are we going through this kind of pressure and this kind of trouble? And there are answers for those questions. We're not the first people to ask those questions. And the psalmists address those issues. And so we'll begin this Sunday with our study in the Psalms. And in that way, church revitalization continues because we want to drive ourselves deeper into the Word and deeper into the nature of who our God is. Another thing that we're striving to do is we're striving to be faithful as leaders we continue to meet as elders uh, nearly every week, and uh, we're praying about the future. We're keeping our eye on the church finances. Uh, we want to be faithful and diligent. Uh, we've got a, a small group of elders, but uh, we have great relationships. The church staff has just been doing a great job. And for revitalization to happen, there has to be a strengthening of leadership, and that leadership has to be on the same page. And I'm happy to tell you that even though things are crazy right now in the world, uh, God's blessing our efforts here at Calvary Baptist. And so thank you for praying for us. Uh, your leaders are united. Uh, we are excited about what God is doing. Uh, we're all ready for it to be over, but we're excited about what God is doing in these difficult times and we look forward to the future. So the second element of church revitalization is leadership and that's going well. The third area of church revitalization that we try to build out is a sense of what we call meaningful membership. We believe uh, being part of the church is not just being an attender. It's not just being uh, having your name on the roll. It's not even necessarily giving or uh, identifying in some generic way, but it's truly being a member. It's being part of a body. In the same way that the New Testament talks about this, in the same way that uh, any part of your body is an integral part of the workings of all that you are, that's the way a church membership should be, that members of the church are part of Christ's body at that place, in that identity, that identity is Calvary. And so uh, we're trying to flesh out, deepen our understanding of what membership is really about and what we call meaningful membership. And I hope that you watched on Easter Sunday. We were so excited to introduce to you nine uh, prospective new members. And uh, we still look forward to the first Sunday back together, whatever that will be, when all of those folks will make a verbal commitment to membership and we as elders will make a commitment to them. And even as a church family, you'll be able to commit to them. So uh, there are other people that are in the membership pipeline and they are still praying about membership. And if that happens to be you, I'd encourage you to go ahead and uh, uh, get us your membership questionnaire, uh, resolve any questions you might have, let us know if we can visit with you because God continues to build out our membership. So in church re revitalization, you've got uh, preaching, uh, biblical theology, you've got uh, developed leadership, you've got meaningful membership. Um, the fourth element is uh, relational shepherding, genuine, uh, significant shepherding where we care for one another and where the church leadership especially cares for the members of the church. And I hope that you felt that. Uh, we've had quite a few folks 
uh, be encouraged by the fact that we've reached out to them. We've had quite a few folks mention that they appreciate the uh, emails that we send and the uh, the phone calls and the efforts to communicate. God, by his providence and in his grace, has not allowed anyone in our church family to be touched yet by the virus, uh, but we want to help in any way we can, and, and it's been, it's gladdened our hearts. I've enjoyed these chores of shepherding and reaching out and uh, the interactions that we have, even though we can't be physically together. In many ways, and I've had other pastors say the same thing, they're seeing a church drawn together in deeper relationships, even in the midst of physical separation. And so that's a good thing that's happening in the church revitalization here at Calvary. So you've got a biblical theology, you've got a strengthened leadership, you've got meaningful membership, uh, you've got genuine shepherding happening. And then the last thing is just a vision for the future. And uh, we're excited about the good things that are happening. And maybe some of you have heard, I think my wife kind of uh, 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 let the cat out of the bag Sunday morning about some of the great things that we're doing around the building and that's been part of her heart and it's obviously some of her giftedness but a lot of folks who have gifts and skills have been helping us and when you come back on your first Sunday when we gather together for worship you won't believe uh, the great changes that we've been able to implement and we've been able to do that uh, with very little cost to the church itself because there have been specific gifts given for that purpose and so in this time of financial constriction, uh, we normally wouldn't take uh, the finances to do some of the things we're doing, but God provided those even beforehand. And so uh, it's going to be great. Uh, we're excited about what uh, this will do to help us as we worship together, as we sing together. Uh, it's going to improve my preaching, and so there's a benefit there. Um, we're excited about some of the changes, and we're not quite ready to reveal them to you yet, but we've got dust everywhere, and the pews are covered with plastic. We're trying to uh, get this project done, and when it is done, we'll reveal it, and you will be excited, and it will be just one more little piece of adding to our sense of vision as we look to the future for Calvary Baptist Church. We love you. We're glad that you're here. If we can help you, if there's anything we need to know, make sure you reach out and let us know. God bless you. We'll talk to you on Sunday, and then we'll visit with you again next week. God bless you.